Thank you, and thank you to Jody, Logic, and Loki for giving the opportunity to talk about the Gaza demonstrations and Gaza demonstrators, which is a very clear example of how imperialism affects us at home. Um, Hanan gave a lot of the context, which was helpful, um, and hopefully Nisa will be able to squeeze it all in. So, like she said, in, in 2006, the people of Gaza, um, in defiance of Israel and its Western imperial backers, um, the, elected um, Hamas to, to represent as the organization that they felt could um, basically defend, defend it from its biggest problem, which was uh, Zionist imperialism, imperialism and the occupation of their land. Um, as she mentioned, the siege was basically designed to uh, punish them for that decision um, and try to weaken the support for Hamas. Um, two years later, this, this policy, the siege, had failed to, to achieve that aim, and so um, Israel responded by launching its three-week um, onslaught on Gaza, Operation Cast Lead, which led to the massacre of over 1,400 people, a large proportion of which were women and, and children. And in Britain, as we saw, um, our own government <laughs> remains silent, and that the silence was effectively an endorsement for the massacre. Um, <clears throat> and this was despite that just a few days before the massacre began, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office went out of its way to condemn Channel 4's decision to broadcast um, a Christmas mes message, an alternative Christmas message by the President of Iran, uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, which included warm wishes to the people of Britain. But while they kicked up a fuss about this Christmas me message in the face of the worst Israeli onslaught on the people of Gaza and its history, our, our government was silent. And while they screamed and shouted about Channel 4's broadcast decision, they, remind, they, re, they remained si silent over another broadcast decision, which was, of course, the BBC's broadcast decision to not, um, not broadcast the DEC appeal for Gaza. In its eyes, Israel was its only democracy in the Middle East, and therefore it was its ally in the war on terror. And condemnation of Israel would have contradicted our own government's narrative that it has been pursuing in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, where civilian deaths are treated as mere collateral damage as part of the war on terror. So this was the background um, to, the, to the Gaza demonstrations, and the, the government was similarly keen um, on appeasing Israel when unprecedented numbers of largely young Muslim um, young people from Arab and Muslim backgrounds flooded into the streets of London seeking to break that silence and they were met with brutal, brutal repression by the state. Um, at the time the government tried to, and the media basically tried to um, get away with this brutal rep repression by portraying these young, young uh, Muslim people who flooded into the streets as thugs and louts Similarly, in a similar way that they criminalised the people of Gaza for, for supporting Hamas. For example, at the time, Home Secretary Jackie Smith said, we are concerned about the situation in Gaza and the impact that it could have on radicalisation in Britain, adding that it posed a serious threat to the government's counter-terrorism strategy. So just as Israel's leaders believed that they could bomb the people of Gaza into submission, the British state believed that it could, with brutal police tactics, intimidate the increasingly angry Muslim youth into submission and also lay the groundwork for increased state repression at a time when its imperialist wars abroad were escalating and spreading to other countries, as Seamus mentioned, in, Yemen, like in countries like Yemen, Pakistan and Somalia. Again, for this reason, Jackie Smith oversaw large deployments of forward intelligence teams whose job it is to photograph video and take sound recordings of protesters for the pr pr purpose of later criminalising them if they so wish. This information is kept on police records for undetermined periods. And her reason for doing this can be explained by comments that she made just the year before when she described forward intelligence teams as harassment style policing. And this is what the state went on, on to do to over 100 predominantly young Muslim males and um, harass them and their families. The state appetite for cracking down on this crowd in particular was also demonstrated by the fact that for the first time in almost eight years, 
there was a full deployment of long shield police units, which are police units that use the long right shields as opposed to the smaller round ones. Um, one officer who was involved in the policing of the demos wrote on his blog um, on the day after um, one of the demonstrations, short of a water cannon, rubber bullets or tear gas, this is the highest state of force we can use in a public order situation and the decision to authorise it was not taken lightly because it is obviously so aggressive. While there was undoubtedly widespread anger from the people at the demonstrations, much of the violence coming from protesters was in response to police provocation. Police attempts to restrain and intimidate people signalled to many of the young demonstrations that their, their position was to defend the inter indefensible, the Zionists. But the state repression didn't end at the demonstrations. In the year, in the year following, 119 mainly young male and Muslim people were arrested largely under public order legislation where whole families were handcuffed and personal items were seized, many of them still to be seen. 79 were eventually charged and many of those people were served with warnings that they could be deported depending on the outcome of the legal action against them. This is absurd because many of those young people were born and bred in this country. And many of them were also successfully pressured into pleading guilty um, by being made to believe that pleading guilty, in pleading guilty they would receive lighter sentences. But what they, didn't know was, what they didn't know was that the courts had already decided to hand out what they called deterrent sentences, which are sentences that will serve as a warning to, to other similar young people thinking about exercising their freedom of expression and association. Um, in the, in the end, uh, 22 of those youngsters received as long as two and a half years in prison for as little as throwing a placard stick and, and pushing or lifting up barriers, um, as we have seen in the recent student demonstrations. On top of the racist media blackout and the blatant injustice of these mass arrests, the racism of the judicial process was evident from start to finish. The judge who was dealing with 99% of the cases used the Bradford riot sentences as a starting point for the sentencing of the Gaza demonstrators. But the only similarity between these two events was that large numbers of angry young Muslim people had come on the streets to have their voices heard. But in the judge's eyes, it was just another case of Muslim youth that needed to be punished for causing trouble with the state's forces. Um, what was also quite shocking about the Gaza demonstrations is the complete lack of support that they faced um, in the, when, when they were being criminalised. And this was quite surprising, or this was despite calls from high profile speakers at the demonstrations who have called for civil disobedience and for the em embassy to effectively be stormed. And I have no problem with such calls being made, but only if there is a strategy in place to deal with the inevitably repressive response of the state which will follow. And there was obviously no strategy, strategy in place as evidenced by the lack of support for these young people. Um, and that's not to say that we should be fearful of the state, we, but we must always be mindful that the war on terror phase of British imperialism has led to the criminalisation of the entire Muslim, Arab and Asian communities here. And it's also led to increasingly repressive police tacti tactics um, and heightened su surveillance of Muslim people in particular. As, again, these facts must not intimidate us, but at the same time, they must play an important part in informing our strategies of how we express solidarity um, with our brothers and sisters who are at the forefront of resisting imperialism abroad. Um, and in this, unity and solidarity with all of our brothers and sisters is crucial. We can't control what will happen at demonstrations in response to such traumatic events as those in Gaza. Um, but putting violence at protests down to rental mobs is an uh, oversimplification which ignores the depth of feeling of people who do not have a voice and it under underestimates the impact of police provocation. Unity means support for all forms of resistance, which includes preparing people for the consequences of exercising your democratic rights in opposition, in, opposition to the in opposition to the state. So I'm pleased to see recently at the student protest that the student movement has been getting increasingly savvy about their legal um, rights in, in relation to the police. Um, coming back to the, the reasons why, why the demonstrations happened, it's also clear that the criminalisation of young, young Muslim people on the demonstrations was facilitated by the fact that Hamas is listed as a terrorist organisation by our own government. 
If we support the, the Palestinian resistance and want to effectively express solidarity with that resistance, we must demand that all Palestinian organizations are removed from the terrorist list.